Hey everyone, welcome. At the beginning of August, IKEA released in collaboration with Sonos the Symphonist product line. These two speakers you see and next to me are the bookshelf speakers from that product line. I've tested them for a month and today I'm going to share my experience with you. So let's start with the dimensions of this speaker. With a width of 10 cm, a depth of 15 cm and a height of 31 cm, it is quite big compared to the Sonos One, which is only 16 cm tall. So it's a big speaker and further on in the video we'll hear how it sounds. So let's have a look on the aesthetics of this big speaker. If we take off the front grille glove, you can see we only have two drivers, a mid and a high. And we have the woofer port which will produce the bass you hear. Further on on the front we have a volume down button, we have a play pause button and we have the volume up button. And of course the status indicator LED. Then if we move over to the back of this speaker, in the middle we have the power connector. A power cord is included, it's a one and a half meters. Below that we have the, well, very recognizable Ethernet connection Sonos provides on their speakers. So you can connect it through Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. The power cord can be routed to the bottom. It depends on how you place the speaker, horizontally or vertically. Um, it's nice you can route the cable for that. Of course, otherwise mounting would be a little bit difficult. Then on the top and on the bottom of the speaker, we find four mounting points in total. On which you can mount this speaker to the wall. I have the mounting tool right here. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, one thing this speaker doesn't have is a microphone. So voice assistant will not be available if you use only these speakers. If you use these speakers like I do in a surround configuration with for example the beam, you can use voice assistant, but it will be used with the microphone of the Sonos beam. Last but not least, these speakers are AirPlay 2 compatible. So if you have an Apple device, you can stream your audio wirelessly to the speakers as well. So let's say you want to mount this speaker to the wall because it is a bookshelf speaker which means you can put stuff on it. I think it supports up to three kilograms. So yeah, it's almost the weight of this speaker. But then you will need the mounting tool. And that's this nice metal frame. And let's see what else we have. If you buy this mounting tool, of course, instructions, an Allen wrench, some screws, So this metal frame goes like this and you mount it to the wall and yeah, you can mount it any way you like. As you can see, I haven't done this yet. So if you mount it to the wall horizontally, you can use this bookshelf speaker and you get this nice rubber, well, yeah, pad. You can lay on top of this like this. And you can put stuff on and if you set up the volume very loud, for example, I expect it isn't falling off because of this yeah, nice little addition to this speaker. So that's for the wall mount. So the funny thing is, if you buy these two speakers and two wall mounts, it will set you back for about 220 euros here in the Netherlands. For that amount of money, you can't even buy one Sonos One. But how does it actually sound? And we're going to find that out in this video. I've disconnected these two speakers from my surround configuration and we're just going to create a new room and yeah, put these two speakers in there. So we open up the Sonos app and if we have a look on rooms, you can see we have two IKEA speakers. Unused it says, so we're going to set them up. Uh, we're going to create a new room for this. Yeah, we're going to configure this in the guest room. Continue. IKEA Symphonisk bookshelf setup is complete. Well, it's just all that, there's nothing to it. Tune your speakers, we're going to continue. Well, begin tuning is not going to work because I'm running iOS beta. Tuning is skipped for now, done. So that's one speaker. Now we're going to set up the other one. It will be the left right stereo pair in the existing room. Continue, guest room, continue. And it will be the plus. Creating stereo pair, stereo pair created. So this one is left, this one is right. Okay, next. IKEA Symphonisk bookshelf setup is complete. Next. And we're also going to skip the tuning for this. Skip. 
if you want to fine tune this speaker, it will just use the microphone of your iOS device and yeah, it will calibrate the audio quality for that room. Done. Now we have a living room where the beam is located and we have the guest room where the, these two IKEA speakers are yeah, located. And for this test, I will just use the same audio files I used for yeah, the Sonos beam uh, overview video. So um, yeah, um, we're just going to connect them with AirPlay in my case. And it will be the guest room. Yes, like that. And the volume is set, well, not too loud. Let's get this mic a little bit lower like this. Yeah, it will be in my face, but yeah, it's not about me. Okay. So we have a couple of audio files and just going to play them for a few seconds and then I'll switch to the next one. That was on a very loud volume, to be honest. They sound pretty clear, um, not as clear as the beam though. Now, of course, you can fine tune the audio quality on these speakers as well. Um, if you go to the Sonos app, you go to the settings, then you go to the room settings. And in my case, we configured the guest room. Um, you can see we have EQ. And there you can see we have the bass slider, the treble slider and the balance slider. So you can yeah, adjust it to your liking and you can make the speakers sound more crisp or maybe a little bit more bass, you can just adjust it to your liking. And that's what I really like about these speakers because out of the box, they do sound actually really great. What we're gonna do now is disconnect these two speakers from the guest room. We're going downstairs and we're going to pair them in the surround setup configuration. So we're in the living room right now. And as you can see, I've set up the left speaker there, the right speaker there. And now it's time to create a surround configuration with high you can see the Sonos beam. So we're going to pair them together. And we're doing that by opening up the Sonos app. So here we have the Sonos app. We go to room settings and we go to a living room and we're going to tap on add surrounds. And we're scrolling down. We want the bookshelf speakers, yes. Set up these speakers, add a left surround, connect, yeah, continue. We don't see a flashing green light. We only see a white light. So we're going to tap on that and we need to press play and a volume up. Yeah, so that is done. Continue, edit your IKEA Symphonisk bookshelf. Nice. Continue, add right surround, continue. Same story. We only see a white light and play pause and a volume up again. and added a right surround. Yeah, that's what we want. Continue. Please wait, preparing the speakers in this room to work together. This may take a minute. As I mentioned before, I can't use the tuning from Sonos on this iOS device because I'm running the iOS beta. 
So for that, we're just going to manually configure the sliders for the surround setup um, to sound as good as possible. Um, tune your speakers, continue. We're going to skip this, skip for now, done. So now it says living room, left surround plus right surround. We're going to tap on that. And I'm just interested by the advanced audio settings. If it remembered my previous settings for testing for the last month. So I'm going to tap on surround settings. Uh, as you can see, TV level just in the middle, music level, turn that a little bit down. And that's because the surround speakers are closer to me than the Sonos beam is. Uh, otherwise I would only hear the surround speakers and I wouldn't hear any audio from the beam. So below that we have music playback. If you tap on that, you can see we can choose from ambient or full. If you set this to ambient, it will only play instruments from music, etc. just the ambient sounds and with full, it plays the same audio as that beam does. So vocals, instruments, all that kind of stuff. So we go back, we can balance the surround speakers if we want, well, that's not really necessary in my case. So now it's time to play, well, the same audio as what we did in the YouTube room and hopefully it will come clear through the microphone. So we have files and make sure we have airplay ready. Living room, yeah. It's connected and yeah, I'm just going to play these one after another for a few seconds and yeah, hopefully it will come clear. Last one. So yeah, obviously you can't get the same experience as I'm having right here with this uh, setup. Um, it sounds really great actually. If you go back to the Sonos app, of course, you just can, yeah, just add a little bit more bass, a little bit more treble. It just remembered the settings from my Sonos beam. So yeah, with that, it's time for my conclusion. And I've used it for a month. I never had the experience the audio was laggy or lagging behind uh, in comparison to the beam. So it was perfectly in sync and with AirPlay as well. So it wasn't out of sync and yeah, it worked really well. Also with watching the video on my iPhone and the audio over the speakers works really well, especially for this price point because 100 euro for each speaker, 10 euros for each mount. If you want to create a surround setup, definitely go with these speakers. Also as multi-room speakers, I could recommend them. Yeah, the, the sound quality overall is really great. With that, I'm gonna leave the video at this. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, you can leave them down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.